How we doing, my people? Hope everyone is having a wonderful Sunday and you're not working too hard and you're enjoying time with the family. Uh, as usual, check out redhillcutlery.com. They got cutting utensils for sale. Like button right there. Looks like this. Finger bang at for me. Subscribe because I'm going to do a giveaway either tonight or tomorrow night. So uh, you want to get in on that because everybody likes free shit. Uh, share, bell notifications, all that good stuff. Um, check out my buddy uh, Satu Dave on YouTube. He's uh, sending me a couple knives. I'm going to send one his way as well to check out. Uh, he's a good dude. Timbo437 also uh, has a great channel. And My Bad Adventures also on youtube uh make sure you check them out if you would like to donate to the channel you can find the info to do so in the description all donations will be used 100 percent for knives for content um <clears throat> this is an expensive uh endeavor running this channel um i'm spending an absolute fortune in knives yes i am selling some as well to make up for it but you don't get what you pay put into them typically so uh you know, it is what it is. I could use the help. If, so if you enjoy the content and you have a couple bucks to spare, it would be greatly appreciated. I'm going to do a uh, <clears throat> Patreon account soon. Today's sticker will be the Spartan Blade sticker. And we're probably going to put that bad boy dead center because they are an amazing company and I enjoy their product. Alright, today we are going to talk about five knives that are crim criminally underrated um these are going to be in no particular order they're all underrated and they are all fantastic so first one will be something i've never seen or even heard of until um timbo 437 timbo sent me a few knives and this was one of them and i like it and it is the Volsteed, Volsteed Nightshade. I don't know if I'm pronouncing Volsteed correctly, but uh, I hope so. This is a M390 bladed flipper on bearings with micarta and copper liner lock. And it has a wild blade shape. And before you say anything about it, that's ugly. It might be, but it is extremely useful. I love it. Um, it is amazing for draw cuts, pull cuts, push cuts even. If you get in this area and you push down on the material you're cutting, man, it grabs a hold of it. <clears throat> it is excellent. The action is amazing. Um, they're not readily available. Um, I saw versions of them on Amazon, Gear Junkie. Um, as far as I know, they're not sold at normal retailers yet, like DLT or uh, Blade Headquarters, Knife Center, blah, blah, blah. Um, this one is a limited edition with the M390 blade. Uh, typically, they come in 154 cm, which I'm sure they are just as amazing. Um, this one's sporting a nice mirror edge that Timbo did. It is very thin, very, very, very thin. It is quite slicey. Jimping's good, pocket clip's good. My carter feels good. It's just a good option. And it's like 130 bucks. So, can't beat that. That is the Volsteed Nightshade. Next is the Monterey Bay Knives Pincer. I have trouble with that word. This is a Ray Laconico design bearing frame lock that is not available anymore that I know of. Um, but this guy is nice. The action is amazing. The flipping action is great. Um, the flipper's a little pokey, but you know, whatever. Pocket clip is great. Titanium everything, M390 blade. Um, Pretty thin, but it has excellent geometry, so that uh, kind of makes up for it. It's got a 
a wild blade shape as well. I wouldn't call it a buoy or a clip point. It's kind of in between. These were like 220 bucks when they're available. Um, I'm sure you can find one on uh, the secondary. Um, there's the designer's name. It is an M390 blade. I'm not sure if it is marked anywhere, but um, as far as I know, it's not. It is milled out on the inside. It's pretty light. Carries well. Um, wish it had a thumb stud because that would make it better. But otherwise, it is an excellent knife. On bearings, that is the Monterey Bay Pincer. Next, oh, and both of those first two knives, those are both uh tim bows that he sent those so uh i appreciate that brother and i'm sure the viewers do as well next will be the max ace whale shark this is my knife you guys have seen it before and it is fucking way overrated it is packing a heavy punch for the price it's around 220 dollars uh between 220 and 250 um it is available still it has multi-roll bearings that are tucked in there into the frame. So debris is much less likely to get in there. I've taken this apart on film before. I uh, can't remember which video it was. So if you want to go back through them, you can see uh, the insides of it. It is heavily milled out. The action is fantastic. And it is using ASP60 blade steel which this particular one is 65.2 on the Rockwell. ASP60 is a uh, mad scientist tool steel that has the potential for extremely high hardness, um, amazing, absolutely amazing uh, um, Oh, hold on. Sorry about that, guys. My daughter was trying to get my attention. Anyway, holds an edge for a ridiculous amount of time. Um, I don't know the composition of this steel. I'm going to guess it's made from tornadoes, hurricanes, um, Chuck Norris's uh, bone dander, and uh, probably... Um, uh, some star debris that exploded a million years ago. Anyway, it's amazing stuff. Um, this particular knife is extremely comfortable. Um, wish it, again, wish it was a thumb stud uh, deployment, but it's not. It's flipper only, which is not my jam typically, but it is well done. Uh, the grippiness on this, they put some texture to it. And it looks good and it feels good. Anyway, that is the Max Ace Whale Shark, uh, criminally underrated. Next, the Spartan Palace Button Lock. This is an S45VN, American made, amazing knife. It is on bearings, what they call alpha bearings, which I have no idea what that is, but this guy is underrated. Now, it isn't available all the damn time, so that's part of their fault, I'm sure. But uh, they can only make what they can make. They're a small company. There's not a lot of employees, and they make a crap ton of fixed blades and stuff. So that's their that's what they became famous for. They also make uh, one of the best folders, in my opinion that is even available uh, with the Harzy. Um, this is S45N, does really well so far as I can tell. I put an edge on it, I've been using it, carrying it. Aluminum body, um, your uh, open construction is awesome, blow it out, keep it clean. Um, I haven't taken this guy apart yet, so I'm not sure what the bearings look like, but they are exposed quite exposed so I can't use this to work with um, because I, a lot of sawdust in my job so I just don't understand why this is more available and why isn't it not highly sought after because it's an amazing knife um, button locks seem to be the trend right now so 
blows my mind. Don't understand it. Last but not least is one of my favorite knives I own. I love it, and most people don't, and I don't understand why. Maybe because it's ugly, but that's part of the reason I like it. Spider Cove Stove Pipe. This, oh, this one's 250 to 275 bucks, um, sometimes creeping up around 300. Um, sometimes available, only bad part about it is the weak detent, but they do have an excellent warranty. Anyway, oh, and it comes to DLC as well. This guy is Spider Co's new, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but they come out with a titanium frame lock here and there um, that is usually extraordinarily expensive. It's almost always out of the Tai Chung factory. As far as I know, it is always out of the Tai Chung factory. Um, except for the military titanium frame lock. But anyway, this guy is $440. Yes, that is overpriced. It is in 20 CV. It is available pretty much everywhere. So uh, more than likely, this will be discontinued quite soon. Um, which is a which is a crime because this would this is an excellent working knife. It is comfortable. It has a lot of hot spots, but when you're holding it, you don't feel them. So, to me, that's no big deal because it's it's a knife that is definitely built to be used. Uh, excellent hollow ground, very thin, but then you have a lot of ass behind it. Um, it's a perfect work knife. It, it, it's just underrated and I don't understand probably because it's ugly as shit and it has a lot of hot spots but again whenever you're holding it and using it you don't really feel those so uh, this will probably be one of those knives like the K2 and the Advocate that was discontinued and then everybody's like oh I want one um, and the Schlees Bowie you know nobody bought them really when they were in stock and then as soon as they were discontinued, everybody bought them up, and now the secondary is ridiculous on them, which is uh, something that happens in the knife world, is what it is. Anyway, these are my top five underrated knives that are in my collection. There's a lot out there. There's also a lot out there that are extremely overrated. Um, in my opinion, the bug out and 90% of knives that are made by Benchmade are kind of overrated they're good knives they're not for me but they are uh i don't know if they deserve the epic status that they have um there's others as well but uh i guess to keep from uh starting a shit storm in the comments i'll uh leave it alone anyway what do you guys think about these do you think they're overrated underrated do you know anything about them at all do you think there is others other than these? Hit me up in the comments. Let me know. I'll see if I can get my hands on them so I can check them out. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and be ready for the giveaway that will be coming anytime now. You guys have a wonderful evening, and I will talk to you tomorrow or later tonight.